Hey everybody, this is Glider Cat, and it's time to play. Today, 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 we're going to play a demo of High Rise City. And I just posted a kind of an early preview video to go over this at a high level. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely go check that out for an overview of the game. I'll put a link to that in the description. But let's jump right in. I, the only thing I've looked at the options here, the only thing I changed was the music just because I get into trouble copyright wise. Uh, sometimes the in-game music isn't uh, copyright safe for the channel. So I just turned that off. Let's jump in. Everything else I think is pretty much default. So for city name, it looks like we can do some randomizing here. Let's do... Let's do... Alexandria, how's that? And then for the mayor name, Henry Hudson, that sounds fine. Let's uh, let's found our city, boom. All right, now we've got some game settings here. Easy, normal, hard. I guess if I just do normal here, boom, that's gonna set everything else for us. We can take a look at what we've got. Trading, population satisfaction, this must be uh, meeting their needs. How difficult it, oh, there, there's pop-ups here. Let's see. There's a middle satisfaction required for the maximum number of householders. Satisfaction of consumer goods increases normally and decreases normally when there is a shortage of consumer goods. All right. Start conditions. We get a half filled warehouse, 40 wood, 40 tools, and 40 fish. Ooh. We go in easy. We probably get the uh, vegetables and fruit too, but we'll just stick with, uh, with medium here. Start money 250. Yeah, so let's just go with normal economy. Revenue consumer goods 100%. Terraforming price 100%. Build the cost refunding. Oh, no refund. Half the construction cost. I'm actually going to toggle that to get. Hmm. Let's make it half. I kind of like getting some money back when you uh, build something, maybe put it in the wrong spot. You want to move it, get some of that cost back. So we'll just tweak that. And I guess we'll go with everything else the way it is. This is my first time jumping into the demo. Wait for this thing to load up. New Amsterdam. Carrier, more vehicles. Larger carriers have more vehicles. Oops, a little bit fast. Hide menus. The F9 key hides all menus. Okay, we're loading voxel data here at the bottom of the screen. Wait for things to load up here. Again, it's a demo. <laughs> it's very early. So expect, you know, expect some things to be some little rocky or some bumps here along the way. Welcome to High Rise City, Mayor Henry Hudson. Please keep in mind that the game is in an intensive development phase. This means that it will still have some bugs and unfinished systems, no doubt. Start High Rise City. Always cool to get an early demo. Okay, High Rise City is an in-depth city builder. If you are new to the world of High Rise City, we strongly advise you to play the tutorial. All right, let's do... Yeah, absolutely. We're going to do this tutorial. Welcome, Mayor. I'm glad you've accepted the job. This is the perfect place for a new city. Well, that's pretty good voice acting. Let's keep going. Let's start with something simple. You can move your HUD screens by clicking and just moving them with the mouse. All right, very cool. It says, first, get used to the basic controls. In front of you, you see your own territory. Move the camera. Move the camera. Move the mouse to the edge of the screen. All right. Alternatively, hold down, hold down the right mouse button and move it. All right. Or you can use WASD or the arrow keys. Very cool. Rotate the camera, hold down the middle mouse button. Okay, pretty standard. And we get the tilt that way too. I'm doing that right now. Very cool. To zoom, spin the mouse wheel. Okay, zooming in and zooming out. All pretty standard. Works pretty good. Pretty smooth. Good. Now let's move on. On the left upper corner, you see your current balance, and below, you can see if you're making profit or if you're losing money. And by the way, if you ever run short of money, remember, you can also take out a loan. All right. This is the HUD quickly gives you the most important information about the city. 
You should always keep an eye on the account balance. The small number below it tells you whether you're making a profit or a loss. So right now we're flat at zero, it looks like. And I'm going to pause. Yeah, it looks like we're paused. Uh, let's see. If you collect... Okay, if you're collected, a typo there. If you collect too many debts, another typo there, uh, you will go bankrupt and be removed from office. If you are worried about money, you can take out a loan, but be aware of the additional interest charges. Makes Next sense. to this, you'll find the number of your inhabitants and the info if they are leaving your city or if they are moving to your city. Okay, that's up here just to the left of our income or our money, I should say. And then this is showing if people are coming or going. I'm sure it's red and green. I'm not going to be able to tell. Yeah, that looks green. That looks red. So up here, I cannot really detect that. So <laughs> with my color blindness. So we'll just have to uh, do the best I can. I can tell them apart here when they're right next to each other. But uh, yeah, I got a little bit of red, green color blindness. All right, take care of your citizens. Boom. And by the way, if your city reaches a certain size, you'll get research points, which you can spend on new technology, new buildings, or to improve other buildings. All right, cool. So as we grow, we get research points. Nice, that we can spend on tech. Here, you can see the resources. To build buildings, you not only need money, but also materials. Throughout the game, more resources will become available. Nice. Yeah, there's a little error here. It says 80 tools and 80 wood. That must be an easy mode. We've got 40 and 40. Let's keep moving through here, the tutorial With screens. With the menu in the right upper corner, you can save or load the game or go back to the menu. All right. All right. Good. Now let's build something. Let's start with some streets. If you move the mouse to the bottom of the screen, the building menu appears. Very cool. Let's start by building some roads. Click on transport in the building menu, then on roads and select a road. All right, let's do that. Maybe I'll move this, I don't know, right over there. Okay, there's transportation, roads. Now what do I do? Okay, looks like we've only got one choice, a two lane road. I'll go ahead and click this. Now the building tool is active. Begin placing a street by clicking on the ground once. Then move the mouse to define where the street should go. If you use the right mouse button, you can cancel your current action. All right. Just looking at the map here also, you can see a ship there in our little river. But I've got the game paused, so it's not moving. And, oh, there's a city across the, the uh, river here. Cool. Nice. So... Oh, and there's a city in the distance there, too. So those must be cities that we can trade with. Let's see. Let's see what it says here. The road building tool is now active. Drag a street by using the left mouse button to set a starting point. Another click with the left mouse button sets the end point. Stop and cancel the road construction with a click of your right mouse button. The road automatically aligns with other objects and can be switched off and on by pressing B. All right. For the first timber production, a road should go through a forest. All right, let's just plunk down a road kind of on our border here. I just clicked once. I'm not holding down the mouse. I'm going to click again. Boom. There's our first road. And I'm going to right click to cancel the menu. All super intuitive, easy. Let's move on. Crossroads can be built on existing roads. Just click on a road and draw another one. Okay, we can do that. Uh, we've got the tool selected, I think. It's interesting. There is a couple segments here. Now, I'm not sure what this is indicating. See how we've got these little dots here. I don't know if they're suggesting where to put crossroads, but let's just do it for the heck of it. We'll grab one of these. I'll click once. Boom. Drag and click one more time. Boom. There's another road. And let's leave it at that. I'm not sure how many resources this is costing us. We'll hit next. Let's take a closer look at the road building tool. All right, let's. Okay, here's our road building tool over here on the left. Straight or bent. Free. 
or draw, improve, angle. Height of the bridge constant, so we can make bridges. Look at these pop-ups. The pop-up animations are pretty cool here. Showing us what, how these are used. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Grid snap. It's going to take me a little while to learn this for sure. But we've got the tool there. Let's keep going. On the Oops. left, you can switch between those. straight and curved streets. The choice is yours. With the button, curved streets can be built using three points. Click with the left mouse button on a free area or on an existing road to place the first point. Place the second point slightly away from the start point. And then the third point determines the end of the curved road. The construction can be canceled anytime with the right mouse button. All right, let's try it just for the heck of it. Uh, it's bent, I imagine. So I'm going to click once here in the start. I'm going to pick kind of where I want the curve to go. Like this way, and then I'm going to check that out. That's kind of cool, right? Very cool. Nice. I'm going to just right click out because uh, <laughs> I'm probably going to go with the boring grid until I need to uh, curve around some terrain or something. And there is terraforming in the game. So I believe there is different uh, elevations and things. They're starting us out in a little flat area here, probably just for the tutorial. All right, let's just read this real quick. Uh, the, yeah, we did all that. Go ahead and click next. Shall we now get some residents into your city? Click on the building menu and select the housing zone. All right, very cool. Okay. So that says apartment zones. So that must be the housing zone that they're talking about. And it does say select zone apartment level one. Okay. Zone apartment complex one. Close enough. Click that. As a mayor, you can define zones where the people are allowed to build houses. Keep in mind, you can only draw these zones when a street is nearby. Also, creating those zones does cost something. Level 1 zones cost money and wood. Alright. So I think we're going to end up with like a... Um sawmill or something out this way where the forest is right because they told us to build into the forest and so as we get off into the clearing here maybe this makes sense for some housing as we kind of move out of the uh, forest here so let's try this it says a circle is shown around the mouse pointer i'm reading off here on the right by the way this functions as a painting tool for new zones residential zones can only be designated on grids adjacent to a street that all makes sense Building resource bar on the top shows the cost. Where is that? Building resource. Oh, I see up here. It's showing me how much it's going to cost as I drag these. Game saved. Whoops. <laughs> the zones are covered by the radius around the mouse pointer. The more residential zones are shown by clicking the right mouse button. I'm not sure what that means. The more zones are covered by the radius around the mouse pointer, the more residential zones zones are shown by the right-click the mouse button. All right, I'm not sure I understand that sentence. All right, click on the grids next to a street with the left mouse button in the zone building mode. All right, let's build some apartments over this way. I'm just clicking and dragging. Citizens decide to build houses based on external influences. In higher ranked zones, skyscrapers of up to several hundred meters may be created. However, this takes time. Time you can speed up on the top left in your HUD. All right, let's see. Now, it just automatically kind of kicked me out of the zone painting mode. I'm not sure if that was just the tutorial. Okay, tutorial construction is not currently possible. Let's see. Interesting. Construction is not currently... Oh, am I out of... Maybe I'm out of something. I'm not sure. Not sure. Let's uh, right click to get out of that mode. And then let's put the play button on here. They're asking for fast After forwards. The let's first do it. After the flats have been built, a symbol appears above the buildings. It signals that this building has problems. All right. So we're just letting things kind of build in. We painted the zone. People are happy for a short period of time here, I imagine, and then now they're upset because <laughs> they don't have power. All right, tutorial money resource. 
Resources. To familiarize yourself with High Rise City at your leisure. You have an infinite amount of money and resources in the tutorial. All right, fine. Good. Kill that. After the flats have been built, a symbol appears above the buildings. It signals that this building has problems. Click on a residential building. Boom. Details about the building can be found in the building menu. Here, you can see what is missing to satisfy the people living here. All right. They are missing electricity. They are missing water. There's, they've got all the garbage they need. <laughs> and they've got some fish and some vegetables and no services. All right. So we obviously need electricity. And I think that's the main thing. Here's a very unhappy face. Let's see here. The satisfaction of the residents is shown at the window on the top. The more satisfied the residents are, the more people move into the building. Residents are anything but satisfied, of course. Next. Okay. See if they're going to tell us something. Uh, this menu shows the consumer goods of the inhabitants of the house. Some consumer goods are more important to the residents than others and increases satisfaction better. Electricity, water, and waste disposal is a service provided by the city and is provided free of charge to every citizen. For all other consumer goods, citizens pay money. The more different goods are offered to the citizen, the more money the city can earn per citizen. And I'm guessing that's how they level up, right? It's kind of standard for these city builder games. As you provide the residents what they're asking for, typically they're going to want uh, more sophisticated products and everything kind of levels up. I think that's how things work here. Let's just hit next. Here, you can see which services are needed. Some services are more important than others for your citizens. Residents of the first zone usually just need a good doctor close by. All right. This menu shows the services like fire brigade, police, religion, and health in the surrounding area. Some service. Yeah, we already saw that. <laughs> when you move the mouse over a service, more detailed information is displayed. The residents of the first level, resident zone one, would like to have a good medical care above all. All right. That's the only service they've got listed here for this house. So eventually, I suppose when we level up these homes, there'll be more services that show up. Let's go ahead and hit next. Close the building information. Okay, boom. Most buildings also need electricity. Okay, select a small wind turbine from the building menu. Let's uh, head over here. They've got it highlighted for us. Energy. Small wind turbine. Boom. Wind turbines can be placed anywhere in the city. They don't need roads nearby. They will supply the buildings with power anyway, so just place them where you would like to have them. Your game has been saved. Okay. So I'm, I'm dragging the turbine around. You can see it... Uh, interesting. Like, it will let me place it for some reason in these little cubes here. These little squares that are in the zoned area. But there's... Other parts of the zoned area won't let me place. I'm not sure what that's all about. But it says we can place them anywhere. Let's pop one uh, right here. Boom. Most buildings also need water. I'll right click onto that. And let's go build water. Where is that? Okay, now we've got water. Select the small water tower from the building menu. Boom. Small water tower. Water towers produce water, but they also need electricity. Build water towers near residential buildings. Okay. Let's build one. Near residential buildings. Now, it looks like it's letting me build it. I guess I can put it right next to here. No? Let's see... Like I said, I got the color blindness issue, so it's going to be a little... There, that looks, uh, that looks different. Water pipes must be placed so that the water actually arrives at the buildings. Okay, select the water pipe from the building menu. That looks like that must be it. Now we got to drag across these zones. Oh, I should have put it near the homes, right? Not too swift. Let's, uh... How do we want to do this? Grid style? 
They say we've got infinite money, so let's do it kind of grid style. I'm going to come down this way. Boom. And then I'm going to come over. So that's all pretty intuitive, right? Uh, boy, having these things track with the roads probably makes a lot of sense. Let's pop it down there. I'll right click to get out of this. Because there is a white water node under the mouse pointer. Each water producing building also has a water node. Click with the mouse on the water node of the water tower and define the starting point. Place one or more water nodes slightly away from the start node. All water nodes must be connected to each other. Unconnected water nodes are marked in red and all buildings in the blue area are supplied with water through the water pipes. Okay. I don't know. I don't see anything when marked in red. When all buildings have a water supply, exit the menu with the right mouse button. Okay. Now, let's take care of the health system. A surgery should be built close to the residential buildings. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, is this in services? Yep. Health. Doctor's office. Boom. The doctor can take care of a defined zone you can see as a circle. Later on in the game, additional services will be required. Interesting. Okay, so it looks like they want this right on the road, right? So this building's got to sit on the road. Let's go ahead and put it uh, right here is fine, I suppose. Or, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Do I have to zone for this? Yeah, the colors, I'm paying a price for my poor colorblind eyes. Looks red to me. Let's see. We're, okay, let's read it. The building is on the mouse pointer. The doctor's surgery provides health services to an area around the building. This is shown with a circle. Later in the game, when you attract higher level residents to your town, they will be more demanding and will no longer be satisfied with just a doctor's surgery. For the first level of population, a small doctor's office is enough, though. Place the doctor's office near the residential buildings. The building needs road access. I don't know. Not sure. The okay, construction of such custom buildings also costs money and resources. All right. We're not really paying too much attention to the resources so far. Open the resources menu. Where is that? Is that... They're probably showing me. Here it is. Right towards the top of the screen in the center. Resources. This menu gives a good overview about the resources. To expand the capacity of your city, you will need to build warehouses. Okay, makes sense. So what's it showing us? It shows us that we are using up wood and we've got 10 tons left. And we've been using tools and we've been using food, Game fish. Saved. And we're not using vegetables yet. That could be because we've only got level one people here. And garbage. We're producing garbage. All right, let's uh, close the resources menu. They talked about doing warehouses. Do that. Since you'll need more resources soon, let us build a lumberjack yard. Keep in mind, they are only efficient if placed next to areas with many trees. Select the lumberjack yard now in the tree menu. All right, let's do that. Industry. Uh, is it here? Building materials? Wood? Let me read the menu here off on the right. Constructing buildings cost resources as well as money. Our wood supplies are low. Wood is an important resource for constructing new buildings. A lumberjack yard collects wood in the surrounding area and is only effective near many trees. Select the lumberjack yard in the tree menu. Yeah, I don't see the lumberjack yard, but this wood must be it, right? It's kind of kind of be it. Oh, check out these little birds. Sorry. I think these are birds flying. <laughs> That's kind of cool. All right. This has got to be it. Wood. Okay, there it is. Small lumberjack yard. We'll go ahead and click this. Once selected, you can see the range of the building displayed as a circle. The productivity is also displayed. And yes, the lumberjack yard also needs access to a road to function properly. Okay, now the buildings are being constructed. Exit the menu by using the right mouse button. Boom. 
gun. Okay, the building stuff too. There's multiple clicks here, right? To uh, to get to the items. So it's basically major category, then minor category, and then actual product. So kind of a at least a three level tier system there for the menus. We're just running at single speed here, so we'll let this thing build. I don't think it's gonna take very long. Take a look at it while it's constructing. There's some little people walking around. Pretty cool. Not bad, not bad. I like it. Okay, click on the small lumberjack yard. All right, here you can see the status of the building. How many raw materials are in the building storage, how high the operating costs are, what problems the building might have, and the construction progress, and much more. All right, so this is what came up. Minimum work, maximum workers 12. So it looks like we're set to maximum, and we could probably dial that down if we needed people or something. Height 11 meters, not sure about that. Trees, 881 pieces, 100% productivity, I'm guessing goods outgoing garbage so it looks like these production buildings produce waste as well okay warehouse zero of 20 is picking up there's no trucks coming to pick up i'm guessing that's what that means and then garbage available i'm guessing that's garbage is zero range is 15 grids and it looks like we've got I don't know, two being processed? I'm not sure I totally understand this display. You can see a little progress bar climbing up there on the right side. Again, I'm not totally sure. Looks like we've got two in the warehouse. That's what this... Yeah, three. That's what that bar is. And then that must just be a processing progress bar. I don't know if you guys see that thing climbing up there on the right side. Anyway, getting focused on the minutiae here. Here you can see... Okay, we've done all that. The lumberjack yard fills up his own warehouse with wood. If the local warehouse of an industry is full, then no new resource can be produced. In order for the newly obtained resources to be available, they must be collected by a carrier. Select the local carrier in the building menu. All right, let's do that. Transportation, carrier, local carrier. Build the shipping company next to a road. They also have a certain action radius. Within mm. that radius, goods are collected. If the radius is too big, it takes way longer to pick up the goods, however. Interesting. All right. So we'll drop this building down, and I'm noticing if I if I put it right on the road, like too close, that's why it's red. If I move over one and get the whole footprint into the grid and not overlapping the road, that's where we get green. So let's pop this guy down. I think they can be right next to each other. I guess I could leave room if we wanted to have a road go between them. Maybe we'll do that just in case for expansion. Pop that guy down. Once the storage of the lumberjack yard is filled up by 50%, the carrier will pick up the wood. You can also manually request a pickup. Okay. You can also have the goods collected from the lumberjack yard ahead of time by clicking on the lumberjack yard and plus pressing the deliver immediately button so our local carrier is still being constructed let's look here okay there's the hmm carrier getting where i'm guessing this is the come come pick up the lumber button no garbage carrier in reach no carrier in reach Just looking here to see what we've got. Local carrier, workload vehicles, reach 40. I guess we could amp this up maybe. Oh, somebody's doing something. See a progress bar moving. Okay, these guys are picking up wood. And I don't know where they're going to take it. But it looks like they picked up wood. We don't really have a warehouse. Let's keep moving on the tutorial. You can see here which goods or food they need. Some goods have a higher impact on their satisfaction. All right, right now our villagers here, or townsfolk, look pretty happy. They've got electricity, they've got water. 
Garbage satisfaction is good, and they've got their doctor local. All right, so let's keep going on here. The lowest class needs fish and vegetables. All right. The fishery must be built near water. Build a road first, and then the fishery. And don't forget to extend the radius of your shipping company if needed. Okay. All right, let's build out the road. Head over towards the sea here. Not sure. I'm going to plunk it down here. If we need to come this way. Oops. Try that again. Hopefully I've got enough cash to pull this off. Let's do a straight line. You to you. You over to here, maybe. And then I'm not... Yeah, how about we just do this? And then let's see if we can get a fishery built. And that, I'm going to guess, is in industry. Food, they're kind of showing me here with hints. Fishery, can we pull that off over here? How close does that guy need to be to the water? I don't know. Uh, the fishery must be built close to the water. Build a road near the water and place a fishery on the road. Keep in mind that the transport company must be able to reach the fishery. And if necessary, the shipping company can extend the radius of action. All right. Yes, I can't tell if this is in within range of the water. I guess as I put it over this way, looks like it's red. And then as long as I'm near the water, it's giving me green. So let's put it near the intersection here, I guess. Boom. To build a farm, you need to define an area with surrounding streets. The roads must be a closed system. Existing roads can also be used. Okay, we'll build a farm. Before we do that, remember they mentioned we need to increase the radius of our trucking. So in order to reach the fishery. So let's dial this thing up, this reach. It's at 40 now. Let's see what happens if we kind of bump this up. That is pretty sweet. Now, they mentioned the downside is things are going to take a little bit longer to move. But let's get that guy in range. In fact, let's go a little more because I'm thinking of putting my farm down here. So that's the fishery should be in range. We should be in good shape there. It's producing. It looks like already I see progress bars kind of slowly moving. And now it's saying in order to build a farm, we got to surround it with streets. And what else? Existing roads can be used to stake out the farm area. The larger the farm, the more it can produce. All right, let's put a farm down this way. We're going to start with a road. Uh, the larger the farm, the more it can produce. But I have no idea what the ideal size of a farm would be. Let's do something reasonable. Your game has been saved. Let's kind of follow these guides here and just do something modest. Or what I think is modest. And we'll follow the guy, the little hints here. Vegetable farm. And do we paint this? Or do we just click it? Looks like maybe we paint this, no? Ooh, right click on that. In order to be able to build a farm. Okay, select vegetable farm. Build the building vegetable farm. All right. I don't see, I'm not seeing like a, a normal build icon I'm expecting to see. Just see a little dot here. Let's try to put this near the main road, I guess. Distance too low. Okay. It's happy. Now it's really weird. Oh, is this what they want me to do? I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. Now, I do get a building as I drag this out. I'm not sure really what's happening, if I'm honest. Let me just read the description one more time to make sure I didn't miss something obvious. You guys probably know what I'm doing right or wrong. In order to be able to build a farm... A farm... Oh, we can look at the animation there too, right? All right, all right. Let me... Okay. 
In order to be able to build a farm, a farm area with surrounding streets is defined. It puts you to find a starting point and several intermediate points. The end point must be back. Okay, I think, I think if I were to watch the animation, I would have got this a little better. Let's try a farm. Let's try another one. I think we start off of a road. And do this and define like a zone. I think that's our farm right there. Check it out. There it goes. That one's a little more modest and we could probably still do it in this area if we want to use this for a farm. Or maybe not since this is already closed in. But we can use this for residential. But there's our vegetable farm. Let's go ahead and hit next while that's building. The vegetable farm needs an office to work properly. Offices are built like housing. So choose the building menu, but pick the office this time. If you insist... Oh, oh, okay. So we get a paint an office area. How about over here? Build a zone office complex. Uh, let's do it here. The town hall is an important building. After you've placed it, you can see revenues and other statistics about your town in detail. Fair enough. Let's build a town hall. Boom. Guess we gotta get it on the road there. That's not a bad place. Boom. More specific details on finances are in the city budget menu. Open the city budget menu. Okay, that's up here at the top, kind of left of the screen here, where it says, I believe, where it says finances, credit, and trading. Looks like they've got that highlighted for here, us. You can see how the balance is calculated. You can also define the taxes in this menu. To view statistics on income and expenditure, build a town hall. All right, that's still being constructed. That's why this display, I think, is blank. Let's let this thing build. It's almost there. We kind of swing around. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool, right? That looks pretty cool. Got people sitting on the park bench here. Nice. They're teleporting in, apparently. Very cool. Pardon my poor scrolling. Nice. Like it. All right, and there's our budget. Let's see, what does it say? Anything? But who likes to pay high taxes? Okay. So we can define tax rates and stuff in here. Revenue. Okay, we're making money from our apartments that we placed. And we've got the office building we placed right next to the town hall. Then it looks like we've got some expenses here for our industry. Lots of expenses. In fact, we're in the red. Credit can be unlocked with one of the next milestones, laws, and trading. So that all comes later. The game has been saved. Taxes. We're going to leave them for now unless they tell us to up them. Let's go ahead and close this and move this tutorial forward. In case your warehouses are filled up, you can also sell materials on the market. Or, in case you need specific resources, you can buy them there as well. Okay. It's saying things such as tools can be bought, but they are expensive. Now, I noticed we've got a little water icon above our town hall. So let's, uh, and so the farm as well. Let's route our water if we can. Where are the pipes? Here they are. Pipes. And let's just uh, extend this guy out. Again, I think we've got infinite funds, so we can be a little reckless with our uh, spending. We can even get the fishery covered as well. So that should solve the water problems. I don't know if these guys need electricity. I guess that kind of transfers over automatically. Remember they said it doesn't really matter where you place it. So right now we've got a single wind turbine powering our little neighborhood, our industry, and our town hall and our farm. This guy's still complaining for water. Okay, it just went away. And now we can see this guy is producing vegetables. Nice. Very cool. Let's uh, advance the tutorial. We'll go a little bit longer and then Your we'll wrap up this episode. Your city produces garbage, and that can cause serious issues. So you should take care of that. Garbage carriers can pick it up. Okay. 
We've got garbage. Let's just see if we click on one of these houses, does it show? It says the satisfaction is fine. Or they're, they seem to be happy. Uh, I thought we could see an indication of where the garbage was. No garbage carrier in reach. Okay, this shows our capacity. 9 out of 10 living space. 0 out of 0 workspace. And 0 out of 0 visitor space. Here's our kind of income statement. We're making $64 a week on rent. And there's our tax rate, 12%. Uh, I hover over the happiness. It's not really telling us much there. And the garbage isn't telling us much either. All right. Select the garbage carrier in the tree menu. Where is that? In here somewhere. Garbage. Local garbage collector. That's got to be anywhere. How about on the corner? Garbage zones must be placed so garbage can be stored. Ooh, got to store garbage. All right. Zone for garbage. Where can we put garbage where we don't need to think about it? <laughs> Uh, in the ocean, of course. Let's, uh, let's dump it there. Now, let's see. Where we, can we put garbage? How about... Well, you don't want it right next to your farm, right? Maybe out by the lumber mill? Boy, no one likes garbage. How about we put a little over here? Thank you for playing High Rise City. We hope you enjoyed what you've seen so far. All right, thank you for playing High Rise City. Uh, the tutorial explains a small part of the game. There are many other features, such as beautifying the city, building city areas, building tunnels, more population levels, complex production chains, exploring the city with your own car, research, terraforming, buff buildings, so upgrades. Try out the features in the full version and build the city of your dreams. Full version is not available yet, but boy, I'd love to get my hands on it. The setting of High Rise City offers so many more possibilities. Public transport, missions, natural disasters, green cities, new production chains, and new needs of the inhabitants. I'm open to feedback and suggestions for improvement, and new cool ideas to make High Rise City a great city builder. Ron from 4XO. Alright, let's close this. Close this. Now, are they going to let us keep building? It looks like we're still going, and the tutorial has just ended. And we're kind of on our own to figure out what we want to do. I think... I think we can keep going. Let's, uh... Let's go for a little bit longer and see what we can do. But for money, we are in the negative. So is there a way we can get out of the negative? Let's see what we've got in terms of buildings here. Apartment zones, we saw that. Okay, office zones. We built that here, I believe. Some small offices. All right, let's just go through the building menus here. Office complex two. We probably need to unlock that somehow. Game saved. Okay, carrier. We have one of those down. I think we've got the zone um, covering basically all of our inhabitants here, right? So they've got everything can be trucked where it needs to be trucked. We got the garbage collector. That's costing us money. Let's see if people are happy with the garbage collection. And don't have the little warning icon here saying that there's no garbage truck in range. I think we used to have that. So these are people are mediocre happy. I'm not sure what would make them more happy. Let's see what else we've got in the building menu. Uh, we did the office zones. We did carriers, roads, a port. At the port, you can trade with other cities. The first one provides five trading slots, and each additional port will increase the number of slots by one. Trading capacity determines how many goods are traded per trading slot per ship. The trading window can be found in the balance sheet. That costs 10,000 bucks. Operating cost is minus 1,400. I don't know if we can generate income off of our trees or not. Let's place it just for the heck of it and see what we get. It's going to let me do it. It's not going to let me place it away from the water. So let's pop it down. Build a port. Maybe we can find a way to make some money here. 
while that's building, let's take a look at what else we've got. Uh, wood. We've got the lumber check yard placed already, so nothing else in that menu. And then we've got a vegetable farm and a fishery. We have both of those placed. So we're good there. This is our vegetable farm and our fishery is right there. Let's see what else we've got. Hey, okay, doctor's office. We did that. Wind turbine. We're okay. I don't see any um, flashing icons telling me to worry about electricity. So I think we're okay there for now. Same thing with water. I think we're okay. And then trash. We did that. We've got the garbage zone. Did we do the garbage zone? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, we did. They told us to kind of click and drag a little tiny bit. I think it's over here somewhere. Whoops. And when I was dragging out those zones, the tutorial kind of kicked me out. There's a truck with some fish being delivered. Pardon my scrolling. It's really fast. The zoom in and the zoom out. So there's some fish. Looks like they're being dropped off here at the local carrier. Now, I don't know if this is functioning as a warehouse. Or not. Change the name. Minimize. Yeah, I'm not sure what this is telling us other than the reach. That's kind of self-explanatory. Color change. Don't really care about that too much. So, maybe this is just a transfer station and product is dropped off here and then picked up again and delivered to where it needs to go, like these homes. I'm guessing. Just guessing. We saw a little icon over here. Let's see what this is telling us. Small lumberjack yard. Looks like we've got a full warehouse. Eight out of eight. There's no trucks picking it up. Probably has nowhere to go. Okay, so we've got the zone garbage. We've done the garbage collector. Anything else here? I think we've covered all of that. We got warehouse and economy. Let's look at economy. Okay, economy is a bank. Can't do that yet. Warehouse they talked about, but they didn't have us build it. Small warehouse. Says we got to reach the next milestone. Now before, I think in the um, tutorial, they mentioned if our population grows, then we get uh, more of those research points. So let's put down some more housing. We'll read this thing off to the right. I don't know how that popped up. You can explore your city, Alexandria, with a vehicle. By pressing on the F key, a vehicle will appear at the mouse pointer, which you control yourself. All right, we can do that for fun. Let's pop here. I'm just going to, where the mouse pointer is, I'm going to hit F. Boom. And then, can I... Okay, here I am driving it. I'm not sure how I can get in. Ooh, I'm zooming in. So, yeah, I'm just driving here with the WASD keys. Oh, oops. Sorry. Game saved. Just took somebody out. Okay, so this is... <laughs> so it's a little... There's a little bit of jankiness here. But that's going to be kind of a cool option. We can just pop in a pickup truck and explore your little town. Oh, look at the horse. I can't turn... I can't uh, pan the camera when I'm in the... Oh, yeah, I can. Center mouse button lets me pan the camera. All right, we got a little horse here. Let's take a look at some of our housing details. Forgive my poor camera work here. I see somebody sitting in their backyard here. If we can get a look. Let's go right back here. All right. That's kind of neat. Someone's sitting at a picnic table and someone else may be working in the garden. The camera keeps moving as I uh, take my finger off the center mouse button. All right, I'm going to hit F again to get out of here. Okay, and we're back where we started. That's a cool little feature. Let's kill that. And then let's just take one more look here at the menu, see what else we're missing. Here's terraforming, it looks like. Okay, that's not urgent. And then demolish buildings. And then what is this? Oh, buy land. Ooh, that must be to expand here on our borders. Let's add more residential neighborhoods if we can. In fact, why don't we first do a road since we've got a natural gap here already. And 
And then let's fill this with residential if we can do that. That's that one. Let's see. Office zones, apartment zones. Level one. Let's paint in some residential here. I don't I guess that's fine. Fill all this up. Just using the brush. Maybe I'm out of resources. Yeah, it looks like I'm out of wood. So that's why they're not letting me paint anymore. I'll just right click to get out of that and we'll wait for these to build in. And then hopefully our lumberjack. Okay, yeah, we depleted the inventory. And now it's filling up its internal warehouse with more wood. And then I think these folks that we're kind of planting here are going to give us more research points. Now, can we see where those are? There they are, research points. We have access to new buildings. Check it out. We just leveled up. Okay, research 200 worker. Okay, now I'm not sure. I see here research points in a, in a, it says 28. No, it says 300 research points. I'm not sure what this 28 is. I have no idea. All right, we've got four lane roads. We've got a fruit farm, a clay pit, a brickyard, small warehouse, zone for garbage, local garbage collection, which we, I think we already had this. We didn't have small local warehouse though, but that's new. A okay, beautifying the city. You can embellish the city in Alexandria with decorative, decorative objects. You can find the decorative under place landscape tools, objects place. All right, cool. Next milestone is maybe unique buildings. I can't seem to click that. Maybe we just didn't get that with this milestone. Let's click the next milestone. Okay, here we go. So this must be our population. We're at 224. It says 225 up here. It's pretty close. And I'm guessing once we get to 450, then we reach the next milestone. And as I look at the, and then here's the buildings we'll get. Fire department, furniture factory down here. Uh, apartment complex two, six lane road, one way, two lane road, small church, small police department, all very cool. And now I'm thinking there's milestones based on population and maybe the research points or something else, right? We've got 28 or it's either 28 or there's 300 research points. Let's go ahead and click on this. See what we get. Does anything come up when we click on these things? Unlock research, build a research institution. Then we got tips, a window, move camera. Okay. This let's see roads, apartment, building information. This must be some of the stuff we've already seen. Cool. I think what we're going to, Ooh, yeah, I got to run water over here. Let's wrap this episode here. We got through the tutorial. We're still able to play. Hopefully I can save the game. I'm going to go ahead. Saved. And, yeah, it says saved. <laughs> I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to see if I can save it. Uh, and maybe do another episode or two and just uh, see how far we can go with the current early demo here of the game. It might be time limited and we're coming up on an hour, so there's a chance we won't have another episode, but I'm going to try. But for now, yeah, very cool High Rise City. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think it's very uh, intuitive, even at this early stage. You know, it's pretty easy to paint the zones. You kind of understand what's going on with the different range of buildings and how you can expand that. I think it looks pretty good. And we've only scratched the surface. We don't have any high rises or anything. And we're on a very flat piece of uh, territory here. We haven't done trade. We did build a port. We haven't looked at that yet or powered it up. It looks kind of cool. As you zoom in, there's actually kind of stuff going on. And it looks pretty cool. Let's see if I hit the escape key. Just wonder if I can get the green kind of off of there and so we can see the people without them looking so green. Nice. Very cool. All right. That's it for this episode. Or now this is Glider Cat signing off saying thanks so much for watching. If you like this content, please give it a thumbs up. That helps my tiny channel grow. And if I can do it, I will see you in the next episode.